Hey guys, welcome to Rust Admin Academy where I teach you the very best tips and tricks to owning and operating your own successful Rust server. On this channel, I do a lot of plugin reviews and tutorials to teach you guys the ins and the outs of how things work in the Rust environment. So if you're brand new to the channel, consider subscribing and turning on all notifications so that you get notified as soon as I upload new content. Before we get into the actual video, if you haven't already, make sure you join the Discord. The Discord is set up just for my YouTube viewers. You're gonna find other members in there that are just like me, that are very knowledgeable in everything that they're doing. You're also gonna find a lot of members in there that have never done this before. So there's a very wide range of people that are in this Discord. It's a very helpful community. I'm sure you'll enjoy being there. I've also finally convinced myself to start a Patreon account. So there you go, right there. Patreon.com slash SRT Bull. If you wanna help support the channel, I very much appreciate it. And just know that I'm not a full-time YouTuber. I do have a full-time job that keeps me out of the studio for at least 40 hours a week. Just so that you know, every dollar that comes in through the Patreon will go directly back into the production of this channel. All right, let's get into the video. So today I'm gonna to show you guys a plugin that is very simple to use. It's called Copy Paste. It's from the UMod website. I'll post a link to it in the video description down below, but I'm showing you this plugin so that you understand how it all works because we're gonna use this in a later tutorial. So I wanna be able to refer back to this video. All right, like I said, the plugin is called Copy Paste. It's by Mysticos and it's available from the UMod website. This is what it looks like when you land on that page. I'll post a link to it in the video description down below. This plugin is super simple to operate. There's not really a whole lot we need to do, but there are a couple of things that we need to pay attention to. So I'm gonna go ahead and install this plugin and then I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. If you've never seen how to install a UMod plugin, make sure you click on the card in the top right hand corner right now. It'll show you exactly step by step how to install a UMod plugin and what to expect while you're doing that. All right, so now that we've successfully installed the plugin, we need to have a look at the configuration file. You can easily find that by going into your Oxide folder, then into your configuration folder, and then open up the file called copy paste. Once you're in there, you're gonna see a document that looks just like this. This is basically configuring how you want copy paste to actually function inside your server. So there's a couple of rules that you get to determine so that the plugin functions how you want it to. The top three functions are basically just based on performance. The first line is basically asking you how many structures you want to copy per batch in a copy mode. The second line, is how many entities do you want to paste back per batch? It's all going to depend on what kind of resources you have available for your server. If you find that when you copy something, it's dragging your server right down to zero performance, then you would want to reduce this number. If you have a very high powered server, of course, you can increase the number of entities that get copied or pasted per batch every time you use it. The copy options, I don't make any changes to this part. You can just use this right out of the box unless you wanna make a change to how far away from your structure do you look for entities that you wanna copy as part of this paste. So by default, it's set to three. So for example, if you have like a furnace or something like that, that's outside of three blocks away from your main base, you might want to increase that radius so that it grabs that entity that's really far out away from your base. More often than not though, these settings are fine. The paste options are kind of important. You wanna pay attention to what these details are telling you. So the first one is auth. So what that's asking you is, the person that's pasting this base, do you want them to be authorized on this base? And because I'm gonna be using this for a demonstration later, I'm gonna say let's leave this at false, but you can decide whether you want it to authorize to the person that's pasting that base or not. The next option is, do you wanna copy the deployables that are inside this base? Do you wanna copy the shelves, the boxes, the furnaces, the TC, the doors, the code locks? What all do you wanna copy? If you wanna copy all of the deployables, change this to true. The inventories, do you want to keep what's inside those boxes, furnaces, fireplaces, TCs? Do you want that to go with your paste as well? You can determine that here. You can see where this is going. You just need to determine how you want each one of these functionalities to work on your server. And the bottom option there is entity owner. Do you want the person that's pasting the base to become the entity owner? And in most cases, yes, you would. Off the top of my head, the only time that you wouldn't want that functionality there is if you had an admin that was going around pasting bases for different players. All right, so that basically sums up the configuration file. Super simple. Like I said, this plugin is really easy to operate. The other item worth noting is if we go into the data file, inside of our data file, there's a copy paste folder in there. This is where all your base files are gonna go once you've copied them from your server. So as you can see there, I have quite a list of bases going on in here. And I can show you the functionality of this plugin using these file names once we're in the game. And that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Now, side note for you, if you're building bases on Fortify 
or if you're downloading bases from the workshop, you can just put that information into this folder and then you can just paste that file name directly out of this folder into your server. I've done that with a couple of these bases. I'll show you exactly what I mean. And because I said that I would mention whether a data file needed to be deleted on wipe day, this is not one of the data folders that you would want to delete. If you wanna carry this information from wipe to wipe to wipe, don't delete this. The only time you want to delete this folder is if you want to completely erase all of the copies that you've ever done in your history. And as you can see here, you can end up with quite a few. All right, so let's go in game and see how this actually functions. Now, before we get started playing with this plugin, we actually need to deal with some of the permissions that are available for it. If you're thinking to yourself, you've never seen a screen like this before, this is admin menu from Chaos Code. I've done a video on how to deal with permissions. If you want to check out that video on how to deal with permissions, click on the link in the top right hand corner. So let's go into permissions. Let's go into group permissions. Because this is a test server, it doesn't really matter which group we grant these permissions to. I'm a member of just about all of them anyways, but you will need to determine which groups of players you actually wanna have access to this plugin. I will caution you, you don't necessarily want your regular players to be able to copy and paste buildings. They'll use it as an exploit, I assure you. So let's just go into the admin group and we need to grant all of these permissions right here. This will allow us to copy. This will allow us to show the list of previous file names. It'll allow us to paste. It'll allow us to paste back, which I'll explain that in a minute. And it'll also allow us to do slash undo. Okay, let's go play with this plugin. All right, so let me just quickly toss up a little tiny starter base. All right, so good enough. We've got a little starter base there. Now, some important things I need to mention here is you want the state of things to be exactly how you want it to be when you paste this building back again. So for example, if you want these doors to be open, leave them open before you copy the base. If you want these code locks to be unlocked, make sure you leave them unlocked before you copy the base. Same thing with your TC. And if you want to put items in your TC, you can. If you want to put items in your boxes, you can. If you remember back to the configuration file, we did specify that we want those items to be pasted over if there's anything in there when we copy the base to start out with. So this is exactly how our base is going to appear once we paste it back. Doors open, code locks unlocked. If you want the doors to be closed, just make sure you close the doors before you copy the base. Once you're ready and satisfied with your base, all you need to do is type slash copy, and then we need to put a file name in there. So we're gonna copy this base as base one. Now, an important note here, you don't wanna put any spaces in your copy file name. If you know you're gonna run into an issue where you have a whole bunch of bases that are named the same thing or close to the same thing, just start naming them like that. Whatever you have to do, just don't put any spaces in your file name. So we're actually gonna call this base two because as you've seen before, you saw that I had a base one in there. If you copy a base to a file name that you already have, it's not going to warn you that you're overwriting a file. It's just going to overwrite and you'd never know that you had a file in there that had that name in there before. So it's kind of important to keep track of your file names. All right, so this structure was successfully copied as base two. So now if we go right next door and type slash base two, there we go. Okay, so here, I'm glad this happened. So you see how this, it pasted and part of the base is underground. You can make changes so that that doesn't happen. So let's see what happens when we paste base number two at height of one. So that looks a little bit better. So now you can see that the foundations are actually sticking out of the ground. The reason why that happened is because I pasted that into water. I'll show you what happens when we paste it into ground. So as you can see here, everything is exactly as it was before. We have wood in the TC. We've got materials in the TC. We've got all of these boxes are up here. All of our code locks are unlocked, ready for somebody to move into. 
One of the commands that this plugin uses is slash undo. Just simply like that. And it will undo whatever the last thing is that we did. So like I said, because we pasted this base into somewhat of a watery area, we had to actually add the height restriction. But if we go to actual ground, we won't or shouldn't have to do that. So let's do paste base two without any height requirements. And so there we go. As you can see, it shows the foundation out of the ground like we would expect. Basically, this base is not underground except for right here a little bit. Obviously, we're on a bit of a slope and we could adjust that if we needed to. But for most players, especially if you're giving these bases away to players, this is going to be just fine for them. If you're in game and you want to see all of the file names that you have as previous copies, you can do slash copy list with no space in between and it'll show you this document right here in your chat. It'll show you every single file name that you have inside your data folder for copy paste. Just makes it easier to reference before you actually copy something else, make sure you're not overriding something else. Plus if you're pasting a base in, you can immediately just look at this list and you'll know exactly which base you want to use. So using this list, I can paste base number 105 at a height of one. And there we go. Now we have this base right here. Another function of this plugin is also the slash paste back. What this is gonna do is it's gonna repaste back the building in the exact position it was in when it was first copied. So as you've seen me do so far, when I paste a building, it goes where I'm looking. But if we use the paste back functionality, it will put it, like I said, in the exact position it was when it was first copied. As you can see, nothing right in front of me, but this base where we first built it and then copied the file is in the exact same position it was before. I wasn't very clear that that base wasn't there to begin with. So here, let me show you like this. Normally in a paste situation, it would go directly in front of me. However, now it has gone in the exact position it was when I first copied the file. So that basically covers copy paste. If you guys have any questions, of course, leave them in the comment section down below. I'd love to hear you guys' feedback. I'd also love to see what you guys are doing with this plugin. There's a ton of ideas, a never ending list of things that you can do with this plugin. Let's say you built a forum or an arena or something like that that you wanna carry over from wipe to wipe. This plugin will allow you to do that. If you wanna supply your brand new players with you know, bases like the one that we just built there, this plugin allows you to do that. If you've got a shop set up somewhere on your server with a bunch of vending machines that you are stocking as the admin of the server, this plugin allows you to do that. Okay, guys, don't forget to check out my Patreon at patreon.com slash srtbull. If you want to see more videos in this same series, make sure you click on one of the videos on the right-hand side right now. That's it for me. I'll see you guys next Friday.